Hey, welcome to the best of everything. I am Ruben Paul. I'm excited today. I'm a little hungover. That's why everybody you almost forgot his name. Yeah, I almost Paul's forgot my name. <laughs> Ruben Paul. But I'm excited today. Of course, I got my brother from another mother. Mm. Johnny Sands. Johnny mm. Sanchez here as usual. And um, the reason why I'm excited is not because of Johnny Sanchez. What? It's all I'm about, man. Come on, man. I'm not sure, excited man. about Johnny San Sanchez. I'm excited about my sister in comedy, one of the funniest comedians working in the game today. A lot of people That's try to truth. say That's some truth. Right Thank women you. ain't Thank funny. You. Yeah. And Good she's far. an example of why that's a lie. She's one of the best in the game, male or female. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, Dominique. Thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you for having yes. Me. Nick, like, I've known Nick for a long time. Yeah. We've been friends for a long time. But I, I was just, when I was talking to Johnny earlier, it was like, there's a lot, like, we really starting to get to know each other, yeah. like, in the yeah. last, Probably I guess, like year since I've, year, yeah, year, since I've been like doing that. Ruby Tuesdays. You've been yes. coming and, yes. and ripping it up for me. Uh, whenever I need somebody, she's one of the people that I call. I'm like, Nick, I need you. She's like, Rube, I got you. Um, but just tell tell people a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Washington, D.C., born and raised. Oh, nice. Is, is that where you started doing comedy? That's where I started doing comedy. Oh, I started okay. in D.C. at a club called uh, the Greenbelt Comedy Connection. Okay. It's no longer there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember hearing gone, about it. Gone. But um, that's where I started, small room. And it was good. Like, you know, I just did it because, you know. My friends was like, you funny and all that. Yeah. So they kind of hooked me up <laughs> with it, and I was like, all right, if I bomb, I ain't coming back. Because <laughs> I got a job, and I, when you got a job and you make like $10 and $11 an hour and you live with your mama, yeah. you're rich. Yeah. So I was like, I ain't coming back. <laughs> Where were you working well, at the uh, time? I was, just, yeah. uh, I was working at a, uh OBGYN at the time. Oh, okay. Just doing like, you know, little... um. Preps like medical the, assistance, little stuff like that, prepping the room, answering the phone, just kind of like you. Know. So let me ask you this: So I know your friends dared you to to do comedy. Mm -hmm. Had you been thinking about comedy before you actually did it? Yeah, but I was just talking shit. I wasn't about to do no comedy. <laughs> I was just trying to appease my mother. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh yeah. She was like, because you know she would have me imitate people, like kind of mm. like. Um, the past at church, I would imitate him and stuff. Mm -hmm. She used to put me in front of my grandmother to do this shit. I, yeah. <laughs> and, and this is this is when you were young or this was already as you were Yeah, but I, I was young, but I was kinda like when I was doing that probably was like twelve. Okay. That kind of okay. age. Yeah. 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 Teen age. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Yep. Age. yep. Not little, little, but yep. preteen age. So and I would do that, but then I would tell my friends, I'm gonna do comedy, just talking. I'm just talking because I would ride around and talk oh, wow. with the shit with them, you know, and they yeah. laughing. But then my friends, we could say, you know, with your friends, you can do an inside joke. You could be like, because that is yeah. that. Yeah. The whole group fall out. Yeah. But he, the one person might be like, what the fuck they laughing at? Exactly, because it's all know, inside. because that is that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but then really how I got jumped off, one of my homegirls from D.C., shout out P., um, she was working at the Pentagon at the time, and the guy that she had dated years previously, she met him again, mm -hmm. and she saw him at the Pentagon. He was working there, too, and they just started talking. Like, what you been up to? Blah, blah. He said he was doing comedy. Oh, really? He said, I'm a comedian. And she was like, you don't sing. Like, you're funny. <laughs> like, she was like, nothing about his personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, made her feel like, really? Like, that's what you, you should do. You, you'll be a comic, your personality. But she said in that, she told him, she said, but my girlfriend, my girlfriend funny. My home That's girl. the last thing he wanted to hear. I know, huh? like, my funny. You ain't funny, but my girl. <laughs> my girl, girl. Well, no, she didn't tell him that. She yeah. told him basically like, oh, oh that's oh, shocking. She oh. went in deeper with me. I needed yeah. to break my sub, oh, okay. yeah. sub yeah. plot, yeah. my script. That, that, yeah. <laughs> I ain't had my backstory. Yeah. Right, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she broke it down. She was like, oh, that's strange. I can't believe you don't, you know, mm -hmm. but. And so he was like, oh, and she said, I had been telling him I was going to do comedy. So she called me and said, well, he want to talk to you. He said, since you're going to do comedy. I called this dude, right? So I was like, okay, but shit, I'm going to try it. Now. You notice she ain't said his name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, his name Kurt G. I don't even know oh, okay. if he does comedy anymore. I haven't yeah. seen him in years. Well, anyway, he invited me over to his house. And he was like, um, and this part of the story always with people like, what? So yeah. he invited me over. He was like, okay, work on your five minutes. And he gave me some pointers and stuff about, like, he was like, you know, try not to write about this. Try not to write oh, wow. about that. He said, if you can stay away from that, he said, you might not see it now. But down the long run, 
it'll wow. benefit you in the long run. Well, that's great not, advice early great on. Advice. Early it on, made dude. A difference. You know how much time that saves? Yeah, I know. <laughs> he put he said that to me before I ever got on, on stage. stage. Wow. And wow. I never in years later. That's why I always talk about him. It served me. It did. Oh, absolutely. Cuz I you know and me, he had been going up. He was funny, you know. So. Me, this is not the Pentagon guy. This is the guy that has a room. No, this no, is the Pentagon. Oh, this is the Pentagon guy. Pentagon guy. He had been yeah. going up, and he was a funny guy to me. You uh-huh. know, yeah. he had been going up. And I went to his house, and he said, well, come over here. And before I was going to go to the comedy club for the open mic, he said, come over here. Wow. Come over to my house. And I know this sounds crazy, but he said, come over to my house yeah. and do your five minutes. So when I get over his house, I do my five minutes in his room. And I'm really doing five minutes of stand-up. Well, when I get in that room, guess who's in that room? Who? Red Green. Red. That's how what? I met Red. And really? We've been friends ever since him and Red was friends. And Red was looking and I was standing up. Had Red been doing comedy Absolutely. already? Yeah, oh, okay. And, and he had told me, Kurt had told me, go see some comics. Mm. So me mm-hmm. and my sister and some of my friends, I was like, well, I'm going to go check this comic out. I get to this comedy club and Red killing, right? I was yeah. like, oh, shit. Shit, I don't know if I can get them in the back. I don't know. I'm like, whoa, they asking me like that. And I'm looking at the people. I'm like, I said, I don't know if they made me like that. These people laughing back to back. But this, was this an open mic or was this? It was a show. It was a regular show. But it was like a little regular show. Oh, I, well, because you're show. going to watch. Yeah. This is you. Watch. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So I did my five. Are you hungover or am I hungover? No, no, no. I just caught it. I just I just I just figured out what was going to end. Yeah. So I went to watch and um, I went to watch and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go up. So I called all my friends and everybody and asked them about my jokes. They laughed and I said, don't appease me mm-hmm. and yeah. give me boo. Don't do that. Cause yeah, you love me. This shit ain't funny. Don't laugh. Speak on it. Yeah. And they was like, no, that was actually pretty good. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. And I went to that open mic and I didn't get a lot of laughs. But I got enough to make me say, oh, maybe. Mm-hmm. I said my little joke. I had a joke about a tempo and a pencil, some little rhyming joke. Yeah. They thought that was cute. I was like, oh. oh. And I just, you know, it's one of them things, and I'm sure you guys feel the same way. It's a crack thing. Yeah. Uh, you keep going. You, you can't get that's, off of it. That's and it, one man. Thing, one You're thing, right. one thing, one thing that I love about Dominique is she's always been consistent mm, over man. the years. Right. You know, and when every time you see her, she always has something new. She's always working. And I didn't give her credits in the beginning, but she's done everything from Def Comedy Jam to Last Comic Standing to Comic v- Every show. And she always, every time I've said, like, Dominique has always been funny, and she's well-respected amongst male comics and female comics you know what i mean and right. in this I'm game thankful for that. yeah you sh- you should be but you've you've worked and you've earned your spot you know what i mean mm. some 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 people might skip steps in the game mm. but there's really no skips steps to skip because it all will come back you're gonna take them you're gonna take them you don't realize yeah. it but you're gonna take them you yeah so, so it ain't it, it's them. it's just it's cool to you know Watch your growth. The thing with uh, with Ruby Tuesdays, why I was excited to have you on the show is, you know, a lot of black comics, we stay on the black circuit. Mm-hmm. You know, right. there's some of us who pop like myself and other mm-hmm. ones who go and, and work mainstream. Yeah. But like I've said on the show before, first six years I did comedy, all I did was black rooms. So yeah. there's just so many people who don't know Dominique you know, some people remember her from Last Comic Standing when she was mm-hmm. on, on there, but the mainstream really needs to see you. And there's a lot of, well, let me not say a lot, but there's there's comics that can work both sides. Of course. You know, yeah. that should. That should. Yeah. But they don't have the it's opportunities. Not a lot, yeah, it's not a, yeah. not a lot. But a lot of us don't get opportunities. And here's That's true. Dominique. You know, she's regular at the Laugh Factory now. Thanks to Ruben. Thank you. Ruben <laughs> helped me. Donnell helped me. Donnell Ross, they put in good words for me. Yeah. Well, I still be just. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she's one of the best in the game. You know what I mean? And just yeah. to be. No, it's. it's there's so it's, many comics. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead, Johnny. No, it's just nice when there's a recommendation mm-hmm. that, you know, it's very few and far between. For guys like you and I, Rube, very we few, do, and very, few very, uh, very few, very, yeah. yeah. very few. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other comics that abuse that 
privilege, I guess you could say, if they're regulars at, at some of these clubs. Yeah. And they're just throwing in people because it's their buddy. It's their nah, pot don't. friend. It's their... Nick, no, I don't play that. <laughs> so, <laughs> do that. And then some of them get nah. get through because, you know, the the club owner likes that comic. Goes, all right, bring this. Go ahead. And yeah. then, you know, this person's stinking up the room, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when we do do it, it's rare. Yeah. And this is the reason why someone like exactly. Dominic, because he had told me that... And then you told me one time, you go, oh, you're going to see Dominique down in Long Beach or something. This was yeah, yeah, one of your yeah, first. Yeah. I go, oh, OK. And then I watched her that night because you t he told me about you. And yeah. I was like, oh, shit. And, yes. You know, and, um, and I didn't know Johnny. And you know, Ruby Tuesday. Oh, really? And no. Uh -uh. And I was like, oh. Ooh. Who was the Mexican? What's the Mexican? <laughs> she did. She's like, like, who that Mexican? He's funny. funny. I said, funny as shit. That's like, Johnny Sanchez. Johnny Sanchez. Sanchez. That was That's like, my okay. brother, man. I was like, who uh, is funny? And I, I, I am. In, Thank um, you. And I'll ask you this, and, and I'm sure they can pull it up, but you did this joke on Last Comic Standing that, to me, kind of sums up your style um, your honesty on stage, the joke about your father asking for a kidney. A kidney, yeah. And um, I don't know if we can put it in and post if you'd mind if they use That's it in fine. the clip. I, I don't mind that. It's time. just, it's just a great, it's just a great joke from beginning to end. The payoff, like, like there's certain jokes from certain comics. Like when I, when you start liking a comic, yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. usually like that bits, like yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even before you know him, it's like, yo, that was that's the the bit that you remember from. And even though I had known Dominique for a long time, when I seen her on Last Comic Standing, I remember watching the bit going, where's she going with this? You know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. a lot of times as comics, we can we can guess the punchline, what the punchline is going to yeah, be. You yes. can see where the person had yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, see yeah, where yeah, they yeah. had when it. They're they're getting, yeah, you almost sit in your chair like this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, ding. Because <laughs> for a minute they had you like, yeah. Oh, you'd be like, <laughs> uh, yeah, that. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's, no, that's comics. Not, yeah, that's, that's, that's just, bad. we all, that's like, I'm sure any of us, somebody yeah. can be like, okay, I know where Johnny's going with that. I know where Nick yeah, was going. Yeah. With that. But I remember watching that song, where is Nick going to go with this joke? And just the payoff of it, what I just thought was, was, was brilliant. And I don't remember what the judges said or what happened, but I just, I just really appreciated that material. Thank and you, did it, was that a true story? Well, it was some of it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so what really the story came out of, it really came out of a pain situation. Of course, for that's what was so brilliant about it. Yeah. yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was a story about my biological father. Yeah. He was never there. Now, I did not miss him because I had a stepfather. Mm -hmm. He had me ever since I was two. Yeah. So I had a dad. You had a dad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had yeah. a dad. But he was not there. Mm -hmm. So even in those instances, you still like, where you at though? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he was not there. But he was um he did get sick and he did have kidney trouble and I did go visit him and all those kinds of things. Yeah, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll so, play the clip and let the audience uh, Yeah, so I hear. went to go visit him. He's gone now actually too. Oh wow. So he was in that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. But I did go visit him while he still was up and as my mother would say, on his feet. Mm -hmm. You know? Because yeah. I have he has his daughter, my little sister, so and you know, my mother was like, well, go see him. Because I was working at Pittsburgh Improv. Uh, and he lived, he, he was living in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, up in those Allegheny Mountains, not too far. Yeah. But he would pop in and out of my life, but there was never a consistency. Consistency, yeah. So to me, if it's not a consistency, it's like. It yeah. All right, so he, um, so he had all that going on with him. And so when, when, when the, uh, <clears throat> go ahead, Johnny. I'm just curious. Um. The season you did, what do you remember? What number? What season that was, and who the judges were? I'm just kind of um, Roseanne Barr was oh, a judge. With Ken and, 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 and Russell. Now Russell. Um, oh, what's his name that did the Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial? Oh, oh, Bill. From SNL. Norm Macdonald. Norm Macdonald. Norm Macdonald. Oh, yeah. so they he did it first, and then they brought Russell the next year. Russell was the year before. He was the year before. Oh, the year, year that was before. Before. you did a thing. Year. Okay. Yes, so it was a ninth, nine? season oh, wow. nine or two. Yeah, or yeah, it was, okay. so, it was okay. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I just, the only reason why I ask is I'm always curious of who the judge, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the judges' interesting calls, yeah. what they make for judges yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So I was curious. Okay, so Russell, was Norm he, came Russell in was and Russell before. was, okay, got yeah. it, got yeah, it. Yeah, Russell okay, was the year before. Okay. So, um, but what I wanted to talk about was from the advice that he, he gave you into, what you're like the comic that you became 
at what point did you realize, okay, let me move to New York? Because you lived in New York for a while, right? I did for, but probably like eight years. Okay. Wow. At what so, point did you leave D.C. to go to New York? Like, what made you move? Um. So, in New York, um, if, I don't know, this is our, my history in D.C., um, we, you know, had a little comedy click. We were very tight. Joe Claire. Joe, Joe Cleasy. Clear, Rap City Zone. Yeah. DC Zone. What up, Joe? Um, Joe Cleasy's on the radio now in DC. Yeah. 95.9 Joe Claire Morning Show. Red Grant. Mm -hmm. Donnell Rollins and myself. Mm. They're all a little ahead of me in comedy. Uh -huh. Maybe a year or so of that. Well, we did a room every Monday night called Tacoma Station. I would host, Joe would host, Red would host. Okay. Donnell was already in New York. But okay. He still would come back and forth. Red was in New York. But Red would come down. Now, Red being in New York already, he started meeting different people. Okay. And he would bring them to the comedy room. So I don't know if you guys know this guy or not, but you might. So he brought this guy to the comedy room one night named Mike Epps. You guys oh. ever fucking <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> Mick, I'm just playing. Because he'd be like, why would you say uh, some shit like that's that? Hilarious. I'm just like, <laughs> so he got really, really close. Yeah. Me and Mike hit it off. Bow. And we still friends. We hit it off. I've been on tour with him. That's how I know uh, Mike. Actually. Yes. Yeah, yeah so Mike Bernal. Yeah. Yeah. I've been on tour with him. So he told me. So he had been to the room. And I guess I had been doing comedy maybe two years or a little over that. And he said, Don, 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 you got to get out of here. Mm. I said, why? He said, you got to give yourself a chance to succeed. Mm -hmm. He said, it's too small. He said, you got to give your yourself a chance to get ahead. Mm -hmm. He said, you got to get out your hometown, get out your familiar circumstances, and get into the hustle and bustle of this comedy thing. Because being in your hometown, it's going to yeah. limit you. Yeah. He said, and you funny. He uh. told me that flat out. He said, and you don't need to be limited being here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Red was already there, so I was like, that's real. And I had been going back and forth to New York. Oh, okay. so you already... I had been putting their feet in, in the water and feet yeah. in the water. And when mm -hmm. Mike said that, and through my career, I've been blessed because people didn't drop jewels on me. And I was always one. I listen. Mm -hmm. I always listen. If it yeah. ain't no good, I throw it out. But if it's good, I'm, I'm a store. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I ain't never been this like, mm -hmm. no, I listen. So, right. and then so like about, I was going to Red's house and I worked in comedy clubs and then I go up there and stay for a while, come back and go and stay. Mm -hmm. And then I went up there and then I just stayed up there. And even though I'm from DC, New York City really birthed me yeah. as a comic. Mm -hmm. All the different ethnic diversities, yeah. all the different rooms, all those different boroughs. Yeah. It really made a difference in my stand. -up. What what was your what was your first uh T V credit? I want to say it was Comic View. It was Comic View. I would think so. I would, that's man, I Comic think. View gave a lot of comics we, a we, good start, man. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, no, I did it. not. It was Def Jam. Oh, you did Def Jam oh, before Def Comic Jam View? Wow. Oh, wow. Yes, wow. Yeah, I want to say I did that Def Jam before Comic View. Mm -hmm. Then I did Comic mm -hmm. View. You know what's crazy? Because Def Jam was the first credit, because I was so happy to tell my mother about that credit, because you know how parents are. Yeah. She was like, man, you, this comedy thing, and... <laughs> I mean, I was like, Mom, <laughs> I got this. And we did those auditions. And did mm. those auditions. And everybody was waiting for that phone call. Oh, yeah, man. From, I don't know what the name of that company was. Steel Bring Gray or whatever it was. Yeah. Real <laughs> Gray. Real Steel Gray. Yeah, yeah, Steel Gray. Yeah. Yeah. Gray. When they called, it was on. Yeah. So I did the audition. Uh, yeah. But I already knew, right? Shout mm -hmm. out to Tina Graham. She had gave me a heads up. Because I started uh, going different places dope. to do auditions. Uh -huh. I went yeah. to New York. Monique had a club in Baltimore. I went to that club. Mm -hmm. I wasn't just auditioning at home. Uh, I was like, I'm going outside of this. You was going for oh, it. Oh, man. Yeah. I set up an audition. I had a dude named Tracy Wiggs that I used to work with back in the day. He set up an audition in New York. I just felt like I stood a better chance if I go work different places. Yeah. I went to Peppermint Lounge, ripped that. I did um uh, the I did audition. The at, yeah, yeah, I did the audition at home. And then I got the Monique's. I went up in there. I was like, can I get some time? So Tina was standing at the door. She was like, you ain't got to go up. They going to call you. You on. I was like, mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> <laughs> And they was like, so yo, was like, like you that on? moment, yo. That moment. I ain't never tell nobody. I mean, I'm one that can hold water. Yeah. You know, I ain't about to yeah, be like. Yeah. And yeah. she, um, 
And they was like, you going up? They was like, mm-mm. And she was like, you could go up if you want. I was like, no, nah, I mean, nah, nah, fucked nah. it up. Yeah. Went up there and bombed. <laughs> and they be like, no. Have a second oh, thought. Yeah. Go up down there. Go up there and be like, no. Because you know what? You would have got up with that overconfidence. Yeah. Yes. Like, man, girl, I got and, this. Yeah, and the peppermint yeah. ain't the place to go up oh. overconfident. No, this was at Monique's job. Oh, this was at Monique's. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, yeah, but, so. but so when you were doing these other places where they were holding these auditions, were you, were you were changing the set? Up or no. was it similar? Oh, so it was you were similar. It so might you, it might have some just changes, a little in it. change. But yeah, Johnny, I kept it most, similar because I wanted yeah. to see this one I'ma do on and the this, show. That's yeah. smart. And this razor sharp, right? You know yeah. what? I'll and tell I got you, the timing on this and everything. That's so. smart. Cause you know what I would have done? What? Different I would, sets. I would have done a different yeah, set, and, and you know what? They, it, w- it probably wouldn't have worked. Yeah. Because there would have been an inconsistency. Mm-hmm. One set would have been great. That second one might have been off. Yeah. Then, that's really like that's smart, that's smart man. Yeah, because not some comics, they eat their their own we mind and ego and overthink. overthinking is like we yeah. oh, always. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show them that I got do. all this extra. Yeah, I got all this material. Y'all can choose what you what you choose what you want. No, we want consistency. Yeah. And we want to know what we're going to get. That's so smart. Yes. Well, well, you know, because that's early on. That was you early did on. that so early. So that was like about, and I can still remember who was on the show and everything. Really? Wow. Yeah. Chris Rock hosted it. Shucky Ducky. Oh, my, my gosh. Oh, that's, is, was that the Shucky Ducky whack whack that episode? Yep. That was that episode. Oh, Myself my Myself and the dude named Ronnie. Shucky Ducky need to get some jokey wokies. That's, that's what exactly he said. What who said was. that? Chris Rock said yeah, it. He did. <laughs> No pool, said John. Yeah. And, and a dude from he said, Philadelphia. Shucky Ducky needs to get some jokey wokies. Yeah. Shucky Ducky, whack, whack. He did got me too. Oh. He tore me up. Yeah. <laughs> he did? What did he say about you? Something about I said, something about that monkey looking baby. He was just snapping, doing what comments. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't okay. really and nothing. And you were just, like you were new, and you were newer at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, so, okay, yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Just some stuff like that. Yeah. And a dude from Philadelphia, I don't even know if he still does comedy, uh, Ronnie Long. Oh, I don't know, Ronnie. Okay, Long. it was Ronnie Long, Rudy Rush too. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy was on yeah, there. Rudy, yeah. Shout out Rudy, Rudy Rush, Rudy. Yeah, Chris man. hosted Rudy Rush, Ronnie Long, Shucky Ducky, and myself. And the big thing about that is, you always knew it was gonna be one person that ain't Cut. make it. Let me tell you something. Out of the four that take. Oh, they only kept three. Yeah. Oh, see, yeah, I never are, knew that. But here, here's Sweet the cold part. So oh, I remember, wow. um, and sometimes the people ripped. Yes. Don't get it twisted. It wasn't yeah. a bombing thing. Yeah. It was just, how, I don't know how they chose. How do they, um, yeah. What, well, what, and, what? It's, and here's the thing. Being in that position, I know, and I'm not going to get into my Def Comedy Jam stories, um, but I remember when I saw the lineup, and I remember Yvette Wilson, who I, I miss dearly, rest oh, in peace, rest Yvette. Rest uh, She... She was like a champion for Reuben Paul. Like she was mm-hmm. like, "Yo, Bob, you need to put Rube on the show. I'm telling you, yeah. you need to put Rube on the show." So I went through the steps. I couldn't skip any steps. I auditioned, whatever. But I, me- I'll never forget uh, when we got to the theater and I saw the lineup. And Yvette said, "Come here." So she took me in the back room. She's like, "You know, you're the one that they think they're gonna cut off this show." She said, "You like oh, look at the lineup." She's telling you. How did that affect me. you? She she hyped me up. Yeah, you know, okay. she it know, made you. She was like, "That so, was good." That she, was good. So she said, and she was like, "Rube," and we used to do. We had a handshake that we used to do, and she goes, "You show these motherfuckers why you." Yeah, here. yeah. And I remember just being like, "I'm about to show these motherfuckers why, why I'm did? here." Yeah. Yeah. And there was a comic on the show that when I did the Comedy Act Theater in Atlanta. Um, Michael Williams, shout out Michael Williams, uh, out. one of the godfathers of, of what we call black and black and comedy. Okay. Okay. Um, he had the Comedy Act Theater in Los Angeles, and it was on um, uh, 43rd off of, no, damn, what was the Comedy Act Theater for uh, 43rd in, in uh, Crenshaw? Yeah, see, I don't know. At the People Regency. asked me about that, but right. it was like before my time. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and I when I worked it, that's when D.L. Hughley and Joe Torrey and Ricky Harris and all them, mm. they were, they're already stars. They're already okay. doing well. And um, so, but the, my, long story short, Michael Williams sent me to Atlanta when I was barely past the open micer. Wow. So I'm like, yo, Mike, why are you sending me to Atlanta? He goes, 
you need to go. He know a killer when he see one, bro. Mm. I was like, nice. On the road? And he put me in the shittiest place. <laughs> the comedy condo with roaches and oh shit. Oh, my God. It was horrible. Oh, oh Those condos, man. So it was oh the first God. time I had ever been on the road. And it wasn't even the headline. They had me featuring. He flew me out, put me up, the whole thing. And I was like, why is he sending me? Like, I only got 15 minutes. Mm. He Maybe. Knew could, he knew you could stretch out that extra 10, though, bro. So, man, there was a host. I won't put him on blast, but he was an asshole. <laughs> and he shitted on me every night. And the, the headliner was a cat out of Chicago who I got a lot of respect for. But these motherfuckers treated me like you're talking about initiation. Yeah. They shitted on me yeah. the whole week, giving me fucked up introductions. Yeah. Like, Do you know, this next any? comic yeah. is yeah. from LA. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So I'd go up, a uh, hole already dug. Yep. And these yeah, were, actually, you walk on stage, as you, I'm walking your, your say, feet go two feet. <laughs> right. You're sunk two feet. And you're like, why are you going to do somebody like that? Yo, no. and they was they was ripping. You know, they yeah. were comics. And yeah. I guess they kind of looked at me as like, why are they sending this dude out here? You got all these comics out here. Why he? So there was a lot of that. So one of those comics was on my Def Jam show. Mm. And he was following me. Oop. Gave him the gun oh, threes like and let me we say, say. And I'm, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to be brutally honest. <laughs> the edit of my Def Jam did not reflect what I did that night. Oh, yeah. I and can believe that. Bro. It did not yeah, reflect editing, what I did man. that night. Damn, like it did editing. not reflect what I did that night. I'm sure. I got a standing ovation when I did my they show that night. They chopped you up bad. They huh? chopped me up pretty bad that night. Yeah. So with that being said, I just remember that moment where I was like, okay. I know I'm not getting cut. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. And then I remember going off, and Yvette was like, that's what the fuck I'm talking right, about, bro. Right, that's what I'm talking right, about, yeah. bro. That's right. So, that so did that guy, was he on after you? Yes. Or? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, he wow. was on. Yeah. He it was, caught the gun through. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember that's when I met Tony Roberts. Okay. I met Tony oh, Roberts okay. because I, I remember, um, you know, after the show was over and everybody's clearing out, and I just, he came up to me, he's like, yo, what's up, man? I said, hey, what's up, dude? He was like, yo, I ain't never heard of you. And I meant to tell him when he did Ruby Tuesdays, I never forgot this. He was like, yo, I ain't never heard of you, but what you did tonight was special. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, thanks, dude. Now, that's one good thing. That's one thing about Tony Robbins I like, too. Mm -hmm. When you when Tony first meets mm -hmm. you and he introduces himself, he always says something positive. Like, did you ever hear this competition called, I think it was the Miller High Life yes. Comp or something? That's where I really, really met Tony at. Tony walked up to me and was like, Robert Harris with titties. Flirt! And what? <laughs> <laughs> that was some funny shit. I said, oh, I said it was going crazy. Yo. <laughs> Shout out to Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is a good Tony dude. And, oh, absolutely. And when you're talking about that Miller like thing, that's the first time I had ever seen Joe Claire. Okay. And I remember... I want to say it was at the wheel turn or something. I don't even know how I got on the show. I don't even remember, but I remember seeing Joe Claire. I'm like, it was something like that. Miller light slits. Miller, yeah, some, some slits, some, small. But anyway, some like liquor. I remember seeing Joe Claire because you got to understand <laughs> that, you know, I came up with killers in comedy. You know, yeah. those were the mentors. So you kind of when you in that environment, why you needed to leave DC, you only see the comics that are on the circuit. And then I remember like going outside the circuit when started doing when I did Dev Jam and then mm -hmm. seeing these comics. I was like, there's a lot of good comics in the country because mm -hmm. you only yeah. see the comics that you work with yeah. and you don't realize you like, don't realize yo, it. Yeah. there's some funny dudes out there. I remember yeah. seeing Joe Claire going, damn, I got some work to do. You know yeah. what I mean? Because he was already he you know they were. He was a more polished, along. a little yeah, yeah, further yeah. along. And before I even knew him as a guy, shout out to Mike Brooks from my hometown. Mike DC. Brooks. Mike Brooks. Wow. Yeah, Mike Brooks. Yeah, and, another um, dude. He was, when we first started doing comedy, we started basically the same time. I'm mm -hmm. talking about maybe a month apart. Mm. That was my road dog. We'd be riding everywhere together. I had this old beat up little tempo. Yeah. I'd be like, all right, Mike, I'm on my way. You had to call on the landline back then, listen for the yeah. horn. <laughs> Wasn't no cell phone, so yeah. I called him on my way. So we went to this club, this, this place they had called a Howard Theater. Yeah. And this before I knew Joe. So me and Mike were standing there. 
you know, I don't think they had put us up or anything. We was just in the place to be. And, you know, we had our little chip on our shoulder because we like, yeah, we the young gun. Yeah. We funny. I don't care what you say. He was like, watch him. And it was Joe. Mm. He said, now watch what he do. Uh, and he went up there and beat the rum to a pulp. Yeah. That, mm. Beat it to a pulp. And one thing that I've always appreciated about your comedy is your pacing. Like, you never seem rushed. Rushed. You never seem, and, and that's one thing that I think is natural about you. You've always been yourself on stage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got great advice early on, but yeah. a lot of comics, and even, you know, there's times like I'm a slow paced dude and I have my pops when I'll speed it up. It's a, it's a rhythm thing. One thing I, I, when I would watch Dominique, I like, she ain't nervous, scared. She taking her time. time. And the punchlines hit hard, and, it's, and and that exudes a lot of confidence. Like sometimes people speed up, or they'll scream, or they'll use all these antics to get laughs, but just to be settled and in the moment. Like that's one thing that's great about Chappelle. Yeah. Chappelle yeah. is That's true. my homeboy, yeah. Dave. Yeah. Shout out Dave Chappelle, Shout out my Dave. homeboy too. We've been yep. friends for a long time. But that's one thing that I even learned from watching Chappelle's like, you, ain't, you don't have to be in a rush. You know, if you believe right. in what you're saying, you know those jokes. Like, your style's your style. I think sometimes when people start, they're like, yo, I want to have energy or this, this, you yeah. know. I was just the same. And, I, and, and then there were times when early on I would try to cram. I felt like I needed to cram 25 minutes into my 20-minute set or my 15-minute set. Exactly. And I look back and I was like, why? Wait, wait, just because in my mind then when I was younger and starting yeah. out, mm -hmm. I was more into like, they need to hear everything I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, what? Well, but, no, but when you, you know? come up, I th the thing that made it special to watch for me, because when you come up in an environment when you're with a lot of killers, the energy in the room is so high. Mm. It is. Yeah. It you know is. what I mean? It is. So yeah. when yeah. Dominique would come up, she would reset the room. Reset. Yeah. You know, and, and but as a, as a young comic, when you've seen everybody like, Everybody killing. I got to kill too. So you naturally try yeah, to yeah. everything elevate goes, your, your energy goes up just, yourself. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just being comfortable with who you are and like, yo, let me y'all y'all about to get these jokes. Mm -hmm. yeah. How it I deliver them. It took me some time to learn that too. You know, mm -hmm. and I think one of the biggest things comics we got to get used to is is it's okay if they get silent. You know, Yo, when you that's, coming up, that's like Chappelle's favorite. He said yeah, that's his favorite know, moments are the, or the silence. silence. It's okay. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. I like, I like the silence too. Silent, you can see in some comics, they like, oh, but it's okay. Yeah, I remember the first time, I can't even, well, I said I remember and I can't remember, but one of the first times I remember getting complimented was, damn, man, the room was completely silent. And I go, yeah, yeah. He's like, that's great. That means everybody is it's, listening and right. paying attention and hanging on every word. Mm -hmm. And there's there's power in that. You know, oh, yes. you don't have to rush through it. No, yes. you don't have to rush through it. Yeah. But you great at that though, Rube. You could be talking and then they'll just get quiet and it's just like out of nowhere. Boom! Boom. Like you just yeah. hit them with Man, just those like, punch yeah. like you just hit them <laughs> yeah, with yeah, something over yeah. top. Boom. Boom. You be like, damn. Yeah, yeah. And the whole room is just back like, and then you're like, okay. <laughs> okay, let me set yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just love, that's one thing. Here's the thing. And me and Johnny talk about this uh, a lot is there's some, some people who like comedy and there's people who love comedy. Mm -hmm. yes, and yes, we tend to gravitate or become friends with people who love comedy. You love comedy. That's why me yeah. and you yeah. get along so well. Me and Dominique got some stuff that's going to be coming out in 2019 yeah. that we're excited about that mm -hmm. we will, uh, y'all be hearing about soon. We'll update you. We'll update you. I haven't heard, I didn't get that call for some reason. Oh, you're going to get it, John. You're going to get it, John. Oh, yeah. Yeah. John I was just kidding, by the way. Johnny Sane. You're going to get it, John. You know, you know That's what his name would be if we was in the mob. Johnny Sane. Johnny Sane. Johnny Sane. Call Johnny Sane to take care you know, of that. You know, when I started, clear. though, I didn't want anybody to know what I was. I was I started as Johnny Sands with a oh, Z. Oh, did? Okay. For two months. Okay. I was Johnny really? Sands, dude. Really? Yep. Okay. I didn't want anybody to know my last name because I thought with this look, no, no one's going to know what I am. And you okay. wanted that? I wanted that because I Why, wasn't Johnny? I wasn't doing any, because I don't want to be pigeonholed. Okay. I don't want to be stuck. That. I go, no, I don't I don't want them to put me in this Hispanic spot, this Latino spot I, of I everything. Oh, wow. Do you remember, I, was, I started, I was only doing observational comedy. That's I right. didn't do That's any right. autobiographical. Right. So I was going, oh, hey, what's up, guys? My name's Johnny Sands. Just so people were had no idea what I was. I feel you on that, though. But then my dad 
I told my dad, he, and yeah. then my dad goes, "Well, what's wrong with 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 our last name? Uh, are you ashamed of it?" And I go, "No, dad. It's so they don't know what I." And I, go, I don't. If you want to do it, that's fine. I just so think. interesting. And then I switched to Johnny yeah. Sanchez, and then got thrown in and all the Latinos. <laughs> 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 well, you can't come out for this audition, Johnny. They want Middle Eastern. But Johnny, you, you've always, though, and we've t we've talked about this. You've always remained true to yourself. Of course, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And I think right. even, and that's one thing. Even when, in the Latino rooms, even in the Latino yeah, yeah. rooms, and that's yeah. one thing I know. George Lopez. I'm not trying to name drop, but when we talk about Johnny, mm. he was like one thing about him. You know, he had a problem with a lot of comics. Oh, man. Not being themselves, trying to imitate him. Stepping on him, dude, you know? for years. And one thing he used to always say is like, when I'd bring him up, he's like, yo, that Johnny, man, he does his own thing, huh? And I go, yeah. yeah. And I go, he does do that. Yeah. He's like, no, man, he's good, man. Funny guy, funny dude. That's yeah. what it's all yeah. about to me, it's, though. That's what the craft is about. Yes. And, that, and like you, you said know. with, with Dominic, she goes up, she's just going to do Dominique. Yes. Like yeah, it's, you know, it's like you said, whether the comic before her is. You know, props and whatever, she's going to come out well, and sets the pace. And I, I admire that about both of you guys. See, for me, uh, I had such an identity crisis when it came to comedy. Not just me in everyday life, but, you know, being growing up in the hood, family from Haiti, there was a lot of things that I had to navigate yeah, through. Because when you grow up and you are different from everybody... That's why I probably became a comic because I got made fun of all the time. Yeah, yeah. So when I, like I've said mm -hmm. on the show a number of times, so when I started doing comedy, I was like, man, I'm gonna be Haitian as hell. And then it was like, <laughs> don't nobody know what Haiti is. Don't nobody know right. anything about it. So my experience was all African American growing up around all black people. Yeah. So that's what I naturally did. And the, the real reason why I went mainstream was because of D.L. Hughley. Mm, yeah. You know, because he was like, Rude. Um, how come you're not doing like the comedy store and the improv and the, the laugh, laugh factory? factory? And I go, I don't know. And he goes, you should do it. And I'll never forget this. I said, do you think they'll get my stuff? He said, nigga, we barely get you. <laughs> <laughs> so D.L. was one of my first mentors. Yeah, He's like, nah, Ruby. He's like, you just got that universal vibe. He yeah, said, you can work both. Absolutely. He's like, keep doing these rooms, but you need to go work there. He's like, you got something. Because Robert Townsend had seen me early on and and showed me love on a, on a project out of the blue. So that's how I kind of went started working mainstream. But still, it wasn't until... Like, I felt like I was honest on stage, but it really wasn't until, I think, like we talked about, the earthquake that I really, and yeah, working, when, when and, they, and Johnny always getting on me, he's like, bro, yeah. how come you're not talking about being Haitian? How come you're not doing this? I, I was like, man, you know. Nobody really knew, but that earthquake changed everything. It changed everything. And then how, working how with so? Russell Peters. Because... In California, so you you from the East Coast, so I was you here lived, then. Yeah, you know, yeah. So and you lived in New York, so you were familiar. You knew what Haitians were. Absolutely, Will Savance, very of good friend of mine. Yeah, big shout out, Will. So, but you got to understand, in LA yeah. in the nineties, nobody mm -hmm. had any idea about Haitians and and there's not a the lot culture. of culture. There's yeah. not a lot of Haitians here. Oh yeah, I knew I had a lot of Haitian friends. In of New course, York. yeah. Of course. So that's why I always tell Will's like, yo, you had a totally different upbringing yeah, than did. I had because he, you know, he was around Haitians. Like my family was the only Haitian family, not only in my neighborhood, that we even knew until oh. until uh, friends of my, my, my parents, you know, came to America and they ended up in the same neighborhood, neighborhood. that we grew up in. But other than that, like, we, that was it. That was it. No Jamaicans, no Caribbean people yeah. whatsoever. So it was just black people. Right, right. You know right. what I mean? African American. And That's then it's it weird because you look black. You know, like not that you're not a black, black man, but yeah. but not <laughs> even like that. Yeah. But you, they they couldn't see, really see the no, shit. but no, I'm just, just saying like, they yeah. couldn't really understand. You know, they ain't they just didn't understand. Well, yeah, because yeah, my friends right. used to believe like, why your why your parents talk so funny? Right. Yeah, so funny. You know? remember the time you a friend called. And your dad oh answered, God. and and then he, and then how how would your dad answer? And they call your he name. Goes, Hello, and then um, he was, and then yeah. was, I guess I'm not a guess. He's like, man, I speak to Ruben. He's like, okay, Ruben, <laughs> Ruben, come get that telephone. And I pick up, and then I remember I said hello, and he goes, 
who was that? <laughs> God damn, my secret is out. <laughs> who was that? Like, they gonna know that I ain't like them now. <laughs> they was giving me collard greens. I was like, yeah, I eat this all the time. <laughs> but I remember. Yo! Oh, oh, yo, man. yo, shades. <laughs> Rock the world yo, as it is. Yo, Tony We're, Rock just popped in. <laughs> <laughs> with the shades on. Yeah. With, with his shades on, on his Hollywood swag. Yeah. Yeah. Oh but that God. for me, that was like, <laughs> that's what I dealt with. I just, you know, I got clowned so much. Yeah. The last thing, I'm, yo, next day at school, I was like, yo, hey, y'all ever call Rube's house? <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, it was a whole thing around the school. And people that's come in and like, yo, what's wrong with your parents? I was like, what? And he was like, yo, such and such called the crib. And he said, your father answered. And he sounded crazy. <laughs> oh, shit. That's the shit I dealt with, Nick. That's My whole LA did y'all life. Grow? I grew up in Carson, off of 190th okay. and Wilmington, yeah. right on the border of Carson and Compton. Okay. That's okay. where I grew up. So I grew up around, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. So they had never, yo. So Ninja that was, ninjas. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come ninja on. Ninjas. That's ninja we, ninja. Look, that's what we say. Ninja ninja. ninja. <laughs> Ninja, ninja, so people dude. never re really realize that. So again, so my comedy journey, which I appreciate everything, because I was very observational when I started, mm -hmm. and I my whole thing is I just wanted to write great creative bits where people were coming to me like, "Yo, that's a great bit. Mm -hmm. That's a great mm -hmm. joke," you know. And then it wasn't until, like I said, that I started being, uh, you know, talking about my life and my family mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stuff like yeah. that. But I always admire that about you and a lot of comics are like wow i i watch you guys and i feel like i know you mm, and to that's me good. that's, that's a, what's great you know that's, that's, that's great comedy i do like that man when i'm watching somebody and and i'm like oh wow oh i didn't know oh that's where they're from that's where they grew up that's what they I, it's just or they that that many people in their family or yeah they, i i mm -hmm. just find that so interesting i mean when i was younger i, I was always all about observational Mm -hmm. creativity yeah. other things but uh the more i started seeing people talk about themselves and of course you know, listen to you know prior would say tell everything about him, himself absolutely he, i mean everything mm -hmm. was out on the table but mm -hmm. i agree with you man i always there's certain comics that we've known for a long time mm -hmm. that sometimes we go we love their comedy they're hilarious they kill it but then we'll both look at each other and go who is he though yeah, yeah. i don't know yeah. anything don't about know anything him about man yeah. we've known him 20 years yeah I don't know a damn thing about it. And it. just to be clear, it we're not. It takes time to get there, yeah, though. It, it does. does. It, it does. does. Wow. Your journey it does. is your journey. It takes a while. And we're not saying that your it's whole act bad. has to be yeah. about your life. No, no. But even, not by, no even if you're not even talking about your life, like. It should be something in there where a person can get a general they get a, idea of who they get the you idea. are. Yeah, who a you just, even if you're talking about politics or whatever, anything, you think. Just a general kind of like, yeah. Because I think in watching Neek, you know, even if it's if something topical, she, you know how she feels about that topic. And yeah. I remember, and both of you guys will relate to this, coming up in the game, the industry is like, what's your point of view? Uh, what's do your, your point TV set. Do, do your, your TV uh, set. You can do the TV man, show. Man, what was that about? <laughs> yeah. Oh. And, they was, and, and they would always tell me this, and then I, and I had a person look at me crazy. They was like, well, just like Bernie Mac did with his nieces and nephews. Yeah, but the part that you, when you say that, the part that you're not talking about is, that's his experience, and he been working on that bit for years. For years. years. He ain't just made this up out of his. And that ain't his only bit. And that ain't his only <laughs> yeah, bit. Man. Yeah. And when they would say that, I was like, I don't know how to do that. My man was like, what you mean? I don't know how to do TV on, I don't know how to do that. I remember yeah. the first time I seen Jeez. Bernie Mac, um, you know, I was starstruck for every comic, and I didn't really know who he was at the time, but how everybody reacted to him, I knew he was somebody. Yeah. And his presence, like when he walked in the room, you're like, I don't know who that dude is, but he's somebody. When I met him, I was starstruck. He had to tell me I could have a seat. I was just standing there. <laughs> wow. He's like, go ahead, baby, sit down, baby, sit down. He used to do like, this oh. joke about, and you, you'll probably remember this bit, uh, Nick, um, he was just so brilliant. He used to do this joke about arguing yeah. with your girl, and um, I don't know if he was if they was trying to make up, but he said like she'd just have her titty out for no reason, <laughs> and then like like they're trying to make up or whatever. And I, the only thing I remember from the bit is when he would go, 
uh, she go, uh, you be bullshit. No, you be bullshit. No, you be bullshit. No, you be bullshit. <laughs> so it was just like, and he dropped jewels on me too. And oh. I was just like, just sitting there. I went to the rap party and I hadn't been here that long mm-hmm. for his TV show. Yeah. And I think that might, I don't know if that was the last season or was coming mm-hmm. to it. And we just sat down. He sat down and he was talking and I wasn't pardon my lips. I would ask different questions. Mm-hmm. You know, to keep him answer things that I want to know. And he answered some questions. And I was like, okay. You know, he dropped some real jewels on me. He was, I wouldn't even sit down. I was like, he said, wow. baby, have a seat. I have a seat. I man, was like, man, he was so, you don't even know right now. Yeah, <laughs> You don't even know right now. Lionel yeah. B booked yeah. me on a show with Bernie Mac years later. Um, it was in San Diego at the convention center. I'll never forget. It was a two-man show. It was just me and Bernie. And I didn't know Bernie. And I went up, I did my thing, I watched Bernie. I mean, I was just honored to be on the show with him. And I remember sitting yeah. on the side of, side of the stage just watching him. And then um, at the end of the night, he was like, are you going to the after party? And I was like, uh, no, I was just gonna go back. And he's like, come to the after party. So I yeah. uh, went to the hotel and um, his wife was with him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember getting into the limo and he goes, uh, he goes, man, come have a good time. And I was like, oh, thank you. He's like, you funny. He goes, you was part of the show. So I want you to stand right next to me. And you shake the people's hand when they come shake my hand. And he, and he, and he just, he was just it kind. Was Christ, he was sharing that. He was with just you. sharing yeah, with me. Man. And the best and advice. And a lot of people don't. Lot they of, don't do that. Celebrities yeah. won't do that. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. won't be kind. Yeah. You know, Ashman Simpson had a song like that. Don't cost you nothing. Yeah. Don't cost you nothing. Shake my hand as you mm-hmm. go. Say mm-hmm. hello. It don't cost you nothing. Yeah. And they just not kind. And I don't understand that sometimes. And he, he, the the advice that he gave me was whether it's three people or three thousand people, they deserve a show. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, Man. You, and, and the, the irony of that is years later when I started working the Laugh Factory, I used to get the last spot of the night every weekend, every wow. Friday or Saturday, Saturday. I was dead last, and that spot is like 2 o'clock in the morning. Wow. And I remembered those words. And mm-hmm. I know a lot of comics now, when they get those spots, they'll turn them down. I'm like, dude, you're trying to get into the club. Take them down spot. You got to take those we'll spots. The crowd be dead, and I don't they want don't anybody to see to me bomb. It don't have nothing to do with anything. No. And I no, remember asking uh, Jamie, I go, Jamie, why do you keep putting me up dead last? He goes, buddy, I want to show in on good note. You yeah. always yeah. do good. Yeah. yeah. And I took it as a compliment. Yeah, it was. And it, and it wasn't until Tony Rock, after years, you're like, hey, enough of this shit, man. Rube deserves to <laughs> be on that 10 o'clock. He, he deserves to be on the he 10 o'clock doing show. The ten, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah. I didn't, I hadn't gotten so used to it, and I didn't, and mine, because that's where I could develop jokes, and because mm-hmm. there'd be only 15, 20 people in the audience. Yeah. So that became those my. the best audience. Come on, I man. Them. Sometimes, I love you know, those when, when, audiences. when we do the weeknight shows sometimes in Long Beach, uh, I know some comics will make jokes like, oh, there's only you know 22 yeah. people here. Some of them are, you're doing it just to make the audience laugh or whatever. Mm-hmm. Some of them are serious. Yes. Some are like, damn, yeah. I drove all the way out here, man, for you guys. Okay. Uh, and I never shit on those no, people. never shit on them. And I go, guys, They're I, here. I, lo- I even say that sometimes. They I came. love when it's, they came on a Wednesday, man, yeah. Yeah. in yeah. the rain or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, I'm going to give, in a weird way, I try, I feel like I give even a, a, a little more effort for those small crowds, because mm-hmm. Friday and Saturday, it's it's busy and it's packed. Yeah, yeah. Half of those people got drugged down there anyway. They don't even. They're not even comedy fans. Yeah. Right, right. It's the people on Monday through Thursday. Absolutely. Are comedy fans. They're comedy yeah. fans. And yeah. I love those small and they, crowds. And they man. deserve a show. Yes. Yeah. You know, and it's the, not yeah. their fault. There's 22 people in there. No, or what not, you know, what do they say? What do actors say? There's no such things as, as small, small roles, small, small part, roles, yeah. small part. You will blow up off the, uh, a part that be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're in a, uh, to the comics watching and listening, every spot is valuable. Yeah. 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 You know, stage time is important. Just getting on the stage yeah. and sometimes just work, even to this day, I still get excited to go perform. Yeah, yeah. you have to. Yeah. Because it's ever evolving. So you're always learning something about yourself. Mm-hmm. You got to constantly get on stage. You yeah. got to just go up. Work on something. Go up. You got to be on stage. It, and if you go on stage more too 
some of the younger comics too you'll find it easier to be yourself yes as opposed more, like people say i'm a student of the game yeah me too but what to to what degree yeah like they have different mm -hmm. degrees it's one thing to be a student of the game yep. but then it's one thing to be studying mm. i don't think you ever want to get caught up in that part yeah of exactly too much study too much yeah. studying yeah. Yeah. Stu I, you you no. brought up exactly i was already gonna say go that, ahead johnny because another these younger comics said any what's if you could just give me the best advice, what do you say? And I go, you, you know, real estate, location, 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 yeah. comedy, stage time, stage, stage time, stage, stage time. time. Absolutely. I go, anything. Oh, because I like to go, how about when I go sit and watch? And I go, no, dude. I go, look, if some guy's trying to make it to the majors and, and, and he's constantly going to watch the baseball teams play. How are you going to get there? Yeah. How is he going to get there if there's another dude <laughs> who maybe is playing over here with the minors, right. but he's playing with, he's he playing, playing. Yeah. in a season. And improving and, and getting he, better. And improving and he's going up to yes. bat all the time. And you're yes. sitting back there going, oh, I'll do that. Oh, that's good. Because, I, I like yeah, nah. you know, we, we've seen those comics for years. Always, what do you, hey, you got a spot today? No, just hanging out, man. What? Again? Why are you there? You looking thieves. Well, you know, they don't give me spots. We know comics. Yo, and all of us know comics that you see all the time but never see them go up. Yeah, like why? Why? Like, and, and here's the other Never like, go. Like, when I'm not, I don't even go like, out if I'm not going up because for yeah, like, why? Yeah. Right. <laughs> what am I going to a comedy room and I don't know, plan on going up because like, why? And, yeah. the, and the other thing is, is some of these guys I would because they'd go I go well, why aren't you well I'm I'm not a regular here yet and I go Th there's comedy going on somewhere, somewhere. right now yeah go get so on that's stage. where you need to be dude go get on you need stage. to be over there for doing that five to eight or ten even if you're already doing a, your feature or whatever you you got what are you, what are you doing hanging out here and just yeah. watching yeah. it yeah. and it's weird when they're they're the ones you know I'll go hang out sometimes at live acting go upstairs and have drinks. I'm not yeah. even really watching anybody. I'm no, hanging out with the comic. You socialize. You socialize. Yeah. But those, well, those, those, the ones in the back yeah. all the time the, uh, that, the, are never, that are never performing. Look like yeah. they got their phone on record. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. I be wanting to say, Some cut, your yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> cut your record off. Cut your record off. Well, I think a lot of times, though, people who just watch, they get influenced by the people that they're watching. And the next thing you know, you're watching them going, it, Damn, it's subconsciously, I do, I do, yeah, I do something very yep. similar to that. Got it, inspired. It, it, they got, got come inspired. on now, Johnny. Yep. They got inspired. <laughs> you inspired, but they don't realize that's really not flattery. Exactly. Right. They call yeah. that thievery. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. This that's right. Well, let me just say this. So, on this, um, on the show, we've. Mm -hmm. we, we've talked about defining moments. Yes. And kind of a theme that you This kind of theme yeah. that, that we kind of like, so every guest that we have on, we're going to ask about defining moments. And just listening to your story, I could, you mm -hmm. probably have a few of them. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, what, what was that moment for you that changed your life, changed your career, or whatever it is, those, mo what, what are some of the, what's, What's the or, or the ahead. yeah or, it can be one that you think you know what if it wasn't for that that night or meeting that person it can be that one thing but it, it could also be like well it's because of this and then me meeting so and so and then so and so but or it could just be one it yeah. could be one thing that you and I feel think it, it has to be that moment where well, here's a question do you think at the time you know it's a defining moment or is it later on that you I realize think you it? know it later on. I okay. Think so. yeah. yeah, I, I don't. Think I think it, some it of them are hard to. You, yeah, it, it, it at the time you you're not. Yeah. So what? What? What was? Just give us one defining moment because I, I know what I think it is, but I want to hear you. I um, I think one of them was absolutely Def Jam. I felt like once I got on Def Jam that I could possibly make money doing this. Mm. That I could survive mm. off of this. Another one would be getting on the Tom Join the Morning Show. Yeah. Because when I got on the mm. Tom Join the Morning Show, you know how you get in a place in your career, mm. and we've all had them, where you're like, okay, I'm here. Mm. I got to turn a corner. Yeah. But in this business, turning the corner, Oof. I, I kind of like, kind of compare it to like, if you under the water and you swimming, like say like if you like swimming with the sharks or whatever, and yeah. you're swimming, and you get to a corner, and it's like a current, yeah. and mm -hmm. you can't quite get around yeah. the corner because uh. the water coming, but you moving, uh, but yeah. you, you fighting through the water. That helped me because he had 9 million listeners every morning, and I was doing a comedy segment on it, and I still sit in sometimes, mm -hmm. but I was doing it every week. 
it, it, it helped me get around the corner. I don't think we ever stopped going around, around the them, corner. Yeah, but right. it helped going me, around the corner. Yeah, right, but it but, helped me get around that corner because mm. it exposed me to so many people. So that was one. Yeah. I probably have a million. Absolutely, last comic standing was one with NBC. Mm. So yeah, probably. Which one do you think, bro? Well, I mean, Def Jam, Def. But when I saw you on Last, last Comic Standing, because yeah, I had known, I, I had. I'd known about you for years, obviously, and a lot of the vets in the game who have a lot, We, I was just so happy that other people could see what we already knew. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, me and Johnny, we, you know, we like who we like, we don't like who we don't like. I'm like that too, though. You know? Yeah. But we root for people who do it the right way. Yeah. You know, and you did it the right way, and I'm not talking about in terms of, oh, because you paid your dues, all that, but just you artistically, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As yeah. as a comic, you really did the work. There's some people who get ahead that skip steps, steal jokes, do whatever they do. They gonna come back and do the work. Come on, at some point. At some point, you're mm -hmm. coming back to do it. Yeah. We but, talked about that at the top of the show. You can do this, yep. but yeah. you gonna, gonna come gonna back, back and yeah. do the work. <laughs> <laughs> It's just life, though. It ain't nothing. It's just yeah, that's life. just life. That that's even outside of cop. Like, yeah, that's just life. That's there's some life. comics who, when when oh, you give, go ahead. Well, go ahead. You know what I think it is? What the defining moment? What? Yes. Um, it's actually taking the time to go meet with that comic from that was from the Pentagon. Yeah. Who, who gave you that, that advice? That's excellent. And let me one. tell you that's why. Excellent, John. Because you didn't have to you could have changed your mind you could have yeah. easily said man go to his house yeah. and then you're gonna tell me i gotta do my set in front of, you know what I mean? you could have easily stopped right there kind yeah. of been like man i, don't. I ain't doing that but yeah. he gives you this advice which is great advice mm -hmm. right you actually take it and listen but some other people and so that first time on stage had you not gone to meet with him and him and you listened to those pointers, It'd you might have gone on stage with different shit yeah. that ate it. And you might have said, you know what, my friends, to all your friends, you know what, I'll just be funny with y'all. Fuck this. Right. Yeah. And, and and I agree with you, Johnny, because, it, and it's crazy that you said that, but I do agree with you. And I, and I will start adding at the defining moments. Yes. Like done. yes. Because had I not got those laughs. I wouldn't have came back. Yeah. And it had to be that way for me, for God to put me in my destiny. That's right. Yeah. Because if I wouldn't have got them laughs, I would have been like, man, y'all tripping. I, I think about that on. sometimes, yep. too. That's like, real yes, talk, Johnny. Yes, That's yes. real, Johnny. I don't know what would have happened if I would have bombed the first time I went on stage. You I feel the same way, back. dude. I, yeah, well, I, well, I, don't, I don't know if I would have done it again, dude. You wouldn't have came back. We wouldn't have came back. But there's some, but, and we're but, talking but, but, some people who do but, that. But there's yeah. some people who bomb, bomb that do. They, but, but that's not our makeup, though. You Good know, point. we wasn't made up like that. Yeah. yeah. We wasn't made up. We would have been like, all right, I didn't try it. It ain't work. I'm just, like Johnny said, I'm going to keep going and make my friends. I, I, to like I told this story before. Um, I just remember the first laugh that I got. I had an out of body experience looking down at myself and the only thing I said, sa I looked at myself and I said, I can't believe they laughing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like laughing. It's hard to believe that they laugh. That, yeah. Like they are Especially like, the first time, the man. First that's, time yeah. you, that's crazy. I know it might sound simple to you guys, but when it's you- It's deep. It's deep. When it's you're really starting deep. to do stand up comedy, and you, you you got all this anxiety and you're nervous and you're scared, scared. and you 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 putting all this material together that no <laughs> one is like this, ever because I'm almost getting the anxiety Dude, <laughs> for real, Johnny. No you one's ever this. heard Ooh. these things that you think about when you're by yourself. So you didn't wrote this stuff down and. It sound funny on, to you, you, but you don't know. And you, got you don't all, know. Oh, you have no, no idea, idea. No, you don't. until you get on stage. But but see, and and here's here's has always been a little bit of my issue with some of these open mics that that force these comics to 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 bring people, the bringers, yeah, because they bring in fifteen to twenty people of their friends, mm -hmm. and their friends are just you know, which rightfully so, I get it. They're 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 gonna laugh at everything that their friend is saying on stage. Yeah. The, a lot of them are just their a support system. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know about that, man. Yeah. I don't. I think you got to go out there. You 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 show up, and you do what, and you find some place where you're. You know, I've talked to some younger guys who were like, well, well I mean, without like 
friends coming? And I'm like, yeah, dude, like you gotta, you got to get used to that. And they would tell me at the bring a show. Sometimes they wouldn't put me up. I was like, all oh, my friends I'm, comics. Yeah. They yeah, gonna already be man. here. Yeah. That's the other <laughs> my people gonna be here already. I don't have no other people. Yeah. I'm not from here. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I yeah. mean, I might know people. Yeah, but, but yeah, come on now. Look, I'd be like, I don't know. I'm not even, I don't, I'm I didn't from here. But in black, are there such things as I never heard no, of? Yeah, that's when I was doing trying to do the mainstream one, uh, and they'd be like, "Okay, if you do it, you gotta bring five people." I'm like, I had never heard no, of the, the bringer. The show. bringer is the bring. Excuse me, the bringer is a little more probably last 10, 15 years. Yeah, because I had never even became, heard of yeah, that. It wasn't they didn't do that never, with, when I was starting out. But, here, in, it was New, like, but in New York, they used to do it sometime. They'd be that, like, a while back. Yeah, okay, while back. but let okay. me tell you something, and I've said this to him many times uh alex thomas and daryl heath shout out alex thomas and daryl shout heath. out Dude, oh, when i when i started doing comedy they they hadn't been doing it much longer than me mm -hmm. but alex would have the room packed i know man i was like who is he, this dude he still do he He's, still yeah. <laughs> had the room packed like, like that. alex is like the mayor alex thomas is like the mayor yeah. of and be LA. fresh to death yo and but what I found out, he was like, Rube, you know, I used to be a dancer. I danced on Soul Train. So Alex knew everybody in the nightlife he scene. He's one of them type of people that can run for office. Like, yes. yes. If, so, Alex, if he ran for Alderman or Mayor or something, Alex would win. Alex would win. <laughs> Alex would win. Yeah, 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 yeah. He would win. But I just remember watching him, like, being amazed. Like, how did he have so many fans? And he just started. Oh, but he had yeah. had a whole nother life of being a dancer a and everything. For real. Yeah, yeah. Alex, so yeah, shout man. out. But yeah. He's out in Israel right now. Yes, I right? know. He's doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Uh, anyway, <laughs> good for him. He's, oh, that's right. That's right. It's uh, like, okay. I, I, you know, I thought you. I thought you was fucking with me. No, 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 no. I wasn't. But okay, I got you. Now. That was inside. I don't it's know what inside. Talking yeah, about. It's, inside, it's inside, an inside, inside, inside yeah, thing. Yeah. But Nick, I love you. I love you too, Ruth. I'm, I'm excited that you came to do the show. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me, man. And um, like, tell people where they can find you. Um, okay, it's Dominique, my Instagram. <laughs> Ex explain your, your, explain yes, your it's, Instagram. It's called Dominique Comedy. I was trying to spell comedy different. I got way away from what I was trying to <laughs> So I just left it. D-I-E? C-O-M-E-D-I. Okay, D-I. Yeah. Like comedy got with it. the I. Like, I got way I thought you, away. I thought you spelled D-I-E. Like, just guy. Got I got it. That's got why it. your fans can't follow you. They, they can't yeah, find you. Like, I got way yeah. away from it. And once I got over 2,000 followers, I couldn't turn back. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was climbing the ladder. That's so, right. so it's D-O-M-I-N-I-Q-U-E-C-O-M-E-D-I. -E -E that's on Instagram. That's on Twitter. On Facebook. It's Dominique Comedian. C-O-M-E-D-I-E-N-N-E. And I um I think that's all. And I we'll know. we'll put it we'll we'll put the link the, the links will be yeah yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah. So I just got way away from. It. I was trying to be different. <laughs> Sometimes you can go too far. She I didn't overthought even it. Did you hear? Spell comma die. We we, like, we we were talking earlier when we go man. It's not as comics. We over overthought it. So you overthought. I'm gonna be different. I'm gonna need <laughs> comedy. <laughs> no, that's come or die. But come, I was trying. Come die. And, um, come die. Yeah. So and you can also check me out this year. I'm gonna be on a, a show called Black Jesus. Yes. That premieres again in March, oh, and then I'm also going to be on a new show called Tropical Cop Tales. Just like a tropical. That's the Comedy Central show, right? That's the Comedy Central. It's also on Adult Swim, okay. but it's a Comedy Central so show as well. And um, and it, and that premieres at the top of the in the first quarter sometime too. So nice. and I'll be touring. Check yeah. me out. You so know. so you guys. Yeah, man, you got to look her up. You have to see Dominique. If you if she's in your city. Come on with it. Go see her. I'm <laughs> telling you, it's it's worth the price of the ticket, however much that yep. ticket costs. She's one of the best. Um, Thank you, Ruth. Thank um, you, Johnny. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Well, Johnny, I love Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't. Yeah, you know, I got to put up with him. So. <laughs> hey man, I Johnny was good today. Johnny, Johnny was, was actually today. good today. You I didn't annoy today. me that much today, I so because yeah, I was intrigued <laughs> yeah. by all this. Okay. So Johnny the man. Thank you uh, for being on the show. And uh. This is the best of everything. So thank you guys for, for listening and tuning in. Oh, shit. You wouldn't rule the room. This is fucking awesome. <laughs>
Come on, white guy. You should still feel the heat. Somebody went, oh, it was a fucking joke. <laughs> I love so much I feel like I have six pack. Ruby Tuesdays, y'all. Where are you? You better get here. Uh, Ruby Let's Tuesdays. Get here! Guess what night? Tuesday nights. I love you. I'll see you at the show.